what's going on everybody welcome back to the creepy basement aka the axe workshop so today we're going to be hanging this awesome double bit axe this is a forest king and it's a swamping pattern i don't have one of these in my collection so i'm really excited to get this thing hung and get out and use it so we're going to be hanging that head on this beautiful whiskey river uh 30 inch double bit handle it has really nice grain and it's got some heartwood in the handle which gives it a lot of character i really like that Alrighty, guys so before we fit the head to the handle. Um, being that this is a swapping pattern, the head is almost uh, symmetrical. So we have to figure out what side faces up and which side faces down. There's some patterns of axes by just by looking at them, you can easily tell which is the bottom of the head and which is the top. But like I said, in this case, the head is pretty symmetrical. So here's a couple ways that you can figure out which side goes up. All right, you guys, so here's how we're gonna figure out which side faces up and which side faces down on this axe head. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna take a measurement of the widest part of the eye. So because this eye is tapered, we're gonna end up with two different measurements. One is going to be slightly larger than the other and not by a lot, it could be by about a 16th of an inch. So I went ahead and measured this and found that this eye and where you're gonna measure is right through the center. You wanna measure the widest portion of the eye. You don't wanna measure up here on the taper. So you're going to measure this side and then you're going to flip the head over and you're going to take a measurement on this side, compare both your measurements. And like I said, one is going to be larger than the other. Whatever measurement is larger, that's going to be the top of the head. The smaller measurement is going to be the top, uh, bottom of the head because what's going to happen here is you want the smaller measurement to seat down in the handle and the larger portion of the eye is the top side because we're going to be sending a wedge into the curve here, which is going to expand the eye wood. All right, so before we get started on... Uh, actually seeing how much wood we have to remove in the eye. What I like to do is we know that this side is going to face down. So I know it's hard to see on camera, but there's a hard 90 degree edge here. It almost makes kind of a lip. And what that's gonna do as we seat the head, it's gonna end up cutting into the fibers in the wood here, and it's gonna end up curling up the wood pretty aggressively. So we're not gonna remove a lot of material out of the ax head. We're just going to, you know, slightly chamfer it to make it a nice uh, slope going into the eye there. So if you don't have a vise, which like you don't need one, you can totally use a chainsaw file. It's one of my favorite things to use. Or if you don't have that, you could use a half round file. So like I was saying, if you don't have a vise, you could just put it up on your knee here. And all you're doing is you're just removing a little material. We're not trying to make the eye bigger. We're just trying to cut into that sharp edge there a little bit and make it slightly round. So I'll show you here in a second how much material I actually remove and you'll see it, it's very little. You can see here, I'm really not sitting here trying to file and remove a lot of uh, metal. All I'm doing is I'm slightly rounding off that edge so I don't catch the wood and start to cut into the fiber. And then I'll take my chainsaw file and then that's where I'll get right in here. And I know you guys aren't here to feel it, but um, I don't know if you could tell, but now I can't catch my fingernail on that edge. But you can see I didn't really remove a lot of material. I just took it from a hard 90 degree sharp edge and then you can say I put a 45 degree on it. It just slightly chamfered it and now I can't catch my fingernail anywhere in there. But I also didn't make the eye any larger than it should be. Alrighty guys, so now we're ready to see how much wood we have to remove out of the eye. Unfortunately for us, this ax has a pretty long eye and it fits the uh, factory eye wood pretty good. So um, we could pretty much slip it on now and we'll give it a little whack on the bottom of the ha handle here. Just one, nothing too crazy because we know it's not gonna be fully seated yet. But now we could see where the wood started to curl. Um, and with a double bit too, just like a sim single bit, you don't want the head to start to tilt left and right or twist, you know, like that. So we're still early on in our hang, but what you could do for reference, one, we're gonna look at the depression in the wood, but you could also take a pencil and make a line just to make sure that you're going straight down the handle. Cause from right here, I could tell that this side is tipped down a little more. But like I said, we're still early on. We gotta come down about another inch and a half, two inches before we're fully seated. 
All right, so now you can see the depression on the wood and you can see where the head stopped. Um, so from what I could see here is we don't need to remove too much wood. It's just hung up a little bit and you see where the, the head starts to catch on the handle and that's where you're gonna remove a little bit of wood and where you don't see any depression in the wood, you don't remove wood from that spot. So uh, you could take you know a Shinto rasp, you could take a shoemaker's rasp or a four in hand or if you just have some sandpaper, that'll work too. So I see I just have to remove a little bit of wood and then this head is gonna walk down um, probably another inch or so. And we're also starting to cut in a little bit here, but we're not gonna remove that until we remove some of this wood only because we noticed that the head was actually tipped more on one side, more of a closed hang on one side. So that could be why we got a depression in the side here. So it's just a couple more things to look at. see how I removed some more wood I was able to get the head to come down more and now you see that hard line so now I know I have to remove a little bit of material across this whole area here but you don't want to do it exactly on the line or above the line we are going to take that line away but we're going to work a little below the line because we want to bring the head down farther we know it only it already makes it to this point so there's no sense in removing material over here because next thing you know we're going to take too much material here and then we're not going to have good compression inside the eye. All right guys, so I decided to go ahead and use my palm sander just to speed up the process. Um, but uh, if you are gonna use a palm, a palm sander, just keep in mind that it is going to remove material a lot quicker depending on the aggressiveness of the sandpaper. So I'm using 40 grit and uh, it removes material quite quick. So um, uh, I do recommend for newer uh, guys doing this to use files just so you can take your time a little more and really focus on what you're doing. So we're getting ready to do our final fit. I'm gonna just um, remove a little more material out of the bottom here and then we're gonna see how she sits. Oh yeah, one more thing I want to mention. Uh, I know I mentioned it in other videos, but I don't think I mentioned it yet here today. So when you're hanging an ax, um, here's a good example here. This is a regular hardware store handle. And you see how this is just very straight. There's no taper to it. And it just ends at this aggressive shoulder. You don't want that. So uh, we can make this handle work, but we're not hanging a single bit. So um, what you want to have is you see how this isn't perfectly straight. It just ever so gradually starts to taper into the handle. You want a nice smooth transition into the handle. You don't want this aggressive change from straight to wide. So what happens here is the head goes down and then it stops. It sits there and that's called a shelf or you'll hear, hear guys call it a ninja shelf. You want to have a nice smooth gradual transition into where the uh, head is going to stop. So just a little tip there for uh, guys that don't know. Um, like I said in the beginning, I know this might be a little redundant for some of you guys doing this for a long time, but uh, a lot of new guys ask uh, questions about that. So I just wanted to point that out now before we do our final fit with our head. You hear the pitch change at first when I hit it it sounded hollow and then the second time I hit it it was a very solid sound that's how you know the head is seated we can give it another love tap just for just for good luck but I know just from the sound that that head is seated so we don't want to wail on this too much because if you keep going after you hear the pitch change uh, you could actually bring the head down too far and crack your handle which I've done so um, there we are we're seated um, obviously you want to do this before this step, but I went ahead and did it. I just forgot to film it, but you want to sight down your handle. Look down from the palm swell to the bit. Make sure that your bit is in line left and right with the palm swell. So the center line of your bit runs the center line of the handle out to the center of the palm swell. I know it might look a little weird in camera, but um, we made sure this one was nice and tight. And then also too, you want to make sure that your head isn't tipped towards the left or towards the right 
or for you guys, for the right to the left. Um, so our, our head is perfectly in line with our handle because you'll see sometimes that you can get a little bit of a twist out of it. If you end up taking too much material from one side versus the other, it'll actually pull the head to one direction. So you'll be holding the ax like this centered, but the head is actually off kiltered. So almost like when you're uh, a kid riding a bike and then you fall and then the handlebars are facing this way and the wheel's going straight. That's not what you want. You want the bit to be in line with the palm swell. And if you're slightly off, but it's still within the palm swell, that's okay. You just don't want, you know, if the palm swell is, is 12 o'clock on a clock, you don't want this thing over at like 10 or two, you know what I mean? So make sure everything's in line. That was our final fit. Now we're gonna go uh, get a wedge ready to sink into this. All righty guys, so I went ahead and took the uh, head off the handle here. I drew a line under the head, so once the head's off, I could see where the head ended. And then same thing up here on the top. So this section here, is the thickness of the head. And then right above this line, right around here, that's about a quarter inch above the top of the head. That's how much wood we're gonna leave sticking out because uh, I like to leave a proud hang. So all this is wasted. So we could see from this point here to this point here in the, in the bottom of our kerf is not gonna be enough kerf to allow enough wedge to really hold this head in there tight. So we're gonna, we want the wedge to be about two thirds the distance of the head. So I figure we're gonna to come to about here with the kerf and with the head seated, um, that should give us enough wedge to really hold the head on there. All right, guys, so another tip that you can, you can do is if you look at the length of our kerf here, it ends there and you can see we still have some wedge coming out of the top. So we're not gonna obviously be able to sink this all the way down. So what you could do for reference is you could draw a line here. So until you're used to that, that sound that you can tell like, okay, I'm seated all the way. You could have a line here. Um, if your wedge doesn't mash out, you'll be able to see that line. So when it comes all the way down to the top of the eye there and you're at your line, you don't really have to guess if you're seated all the way. All right, you guys. So next thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our head off the handle. Remember which side you have is the top. We can see here that our wedge is a little too wide for the eye here. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to tune the wedge to the hang so and to the head. So we're gonna remove a little material on either side here. You could just do it on one side if you like. And if you also notice too, the eye has like a teardrop on either side. It's a nice oval and our wedge is squared off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to match that shape. So you don't wanna remove too much of your length here uh, because you are gonna lose it once you start to taper this off to match that angle. And you don't have to do that, but it does make it um, you know, look a lot nicer in the hang and it's nice to try to fill that gap if you can. If you don't and you just cut it and leave it square and mash it in there, it's not a big deal, but I like to make it fit the shape. Alrighty guys, so I went ahead and rounded off the corners of the wedge and it looked to be a little thick for the hang. So I thinned it down a little bit. You can see it's more of a, a gradual, slight taper versus being very abrupt and, and wide at the top. Um, and then also when I mean tune it for the hang and tune it for the head, I like to round these corners off here so that it fits into the eye nice and I know it'll fill those holes. And I could tell here that I'm already at the bottom and I know we're not gonna go down that far. So I know this wedge is gonna fit in to the eye perfectly. Um, hopefully it sits into the curve perfectly. It might be still a little too thick, but we're gonna find out in a second here. Now, you don't have to do this, but I like doing it um, because this wood's never gonna get any linseed oil on it inside the eye. I just like to put a little bit of linseed oil on there before I seat the head for the, for the last time. Like I said, this is just something I do. You don't have to do it. It's not important. Your head isn't gonna come loose or not hang correctly if you don't do this. This is just something I do. Uh, so if you like this idea, um, give it a shot. But like I said, it's not important and it's not necessary. Oh guys, I forgot to mention this as well, but I add linseed oil to the wedge as well. Uh, you don't have to do this, but um, it does help. Uh, I, I find it does help allow the wedge to drive in a little easier versus doing it without any lubricant. Like if you just do it, just dry wood on dry wood, it, it tends to bind up a little bit. So the linseed oil does help the wedge slide into the kerf. And also it's wood that would never get uh, linseed oil on it when you're oiling your handle. So I like knowing that there's linseed oil in there as well. Some guys use wood glue and that's totally okay. 
Um, I just I just don't um, do that just in case you know I don't have a great hang or it loosens up a little bit. Uh, I can extract this wedge and rehang it if need be. All right, guys. So now we got the head seated and we're ready to send our wedge home. You want to try to hit this wedge as square as possible. Some guys turn the head upside down like that and hit the palm swell and drive the wedge in. Some people just stand up and hit it down like that, which is fine too. Um, I tend to sit down like this and hit it like that. It's totally up to you, but you just want to send. And uh, like I just told you guys to hit it straight and I'm not. So try to straighten that up a little bit. I don't think that's going to happen, but you want to go ahead and send this wedge home. Alrighty guys, last step, we're going to cut the excess off. We're not going to cut it flush. We're going to leave about a quarter inch of wood sticking out off the top of the ax. Um, and that's called a proud hang. And that way you just get a little bit of a mushrooming up above the head. Um, and it helps, you know, keep the head on a little better. And uh, it also looks a lot nicer in my eyes too. You can cut yours flush if you would like, but I seem to have really good luck with the proud hang. So that's what we're gonna do now. Alrighty guys, so I think that about does it for today. We got the head seated on the handle. Um, keep an eye out for next video because we're gonna be out using this ax. So in the meantime, I'm gonna get this thing tuned up, ready to chop. I was gonna try to put that all in today's video, but I think it would have ran on a little too long. So with that being said, guys, again, I really appreciate you all watching and I hope someone was able to learn something from today's video and we'll see you guys on the next one.